Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3. Easily some of the best items in the game. I would actually even say most of the best items are in Act 3, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, if you think of it like this, that's a good thing, in my opinion, because that means there's progression in the game. Imagine you get all your best gear in Act 1, then what the fuck is the point in playing the rest of the game? So I like the fact that a lot of builds get enabled in Act 3. I know some people don't feel that way, and that's cool. Everyone can have their own opinion. But for me, I like how in Act 3, you can turn a mid-build into a godlike build. All right? Y'all have already seen some of the builds that I've made on this channel. And a lot of those builds use items from Act 3, right? I try to make those builds, you know, not entirely Act 3 items because I get it right um you don't want to make your whole build based around one act I, I i i understand that and that's what i try to do but the truth is the best items are in act three <laughs> that's just the truth the best armor the best weapons you know all that type of shit so with this video i'm gonna show y'all what i think are the best items to get in act three now before i show anything i have to preface this video like i do with every other video by saying Everything that I'm about to show y'all and tell y'all, it's just my opinion. It's just a random dude on the internet's opinion, okay? If you disagree, if you agree, if you want to put in your two cents, that's what the comments are for, baby. You know what I mean? It, it's uh, it's all good. You know, we ain't got to go to war over, oh my god, you can get the... You know, we ain't got to... We don't, we don't have to go to war over everything, right? We could discuss it, and I'm, I'm, I'm all for discussion, all right? So with that being said, I present to y'all... The best items in Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3. The Band of the Mystic Scoundrel. After hitting a, a creature with a weapon attack, you can cast illusion or enchantment spells as a bonus action. Um, I like this ring a lot. This ring can make for some very spicy, gishy, ranger type builds. You know what I'm saying? Um, one that comes to mind is the dual hand, dual hand crossbow. Because we got two bonus actions. Because you can use one to cast a spell. One of your bard spells. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can find this. Actually, I'm going to tell you where you can find this. After I show you about the next item. Which is... You probably know... If you know where I am right now. It, 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 it is the trident that's coming. So... Um, just... If you want to know where, how to get this item. Just stick around for a little bit. I'll show you the location. The Nairuna. Probably the best throwing weapon in the game. The Dwarven Thrower is not bad. That's pretty good. But for me, this is the best one. This weapon will return to your hand when thrown. Only one other weapon in the game has this passive feature, and that's the Returning Pike, which you can buy in, in the Goblin Vendor at the Goblin Camp in Act 1, way back then. You cannot be forced to drop the weapon. That means it can't be disarmed off of you which is pretty good, or commanded off of you. When thrown, the weapon creates an explosion that deals three to 12 thunder damage in a six meter blast centered on the target. So not only does it do pretty decent single target damage, it, bling a, it being a plus three weapon and all, but it actually does a little AOE. And you're probably gonna be playing a class that has those extra attacks, like a fighter with this weapon. Um, fighter Barbarian, for example. So you're going to be throwing this quite a lot per turn. Which means this 3 to 12 damage, which may seem small, will add up in, in an AOE. Area of effect, not my name. <laughs> okay. You gain a 3 meter bonus to movement speed and jump distance. Nice. Equipping this weapon gives you immunity to falling damage. A free feather fall. It just keeps stacking up. Just so many positives with, with this weapon. This object shines with a glowing light in a radius of 6 meters, so it also comes with light. It, it, it is just, it, it's lighted all the time, which is nice for those characters that don't have dark vision. Okay. It even comes with cool attacks. Zephyr Flash. 6 to 48 damage. That's, that's the same thing as Fireball, by the way. Rush forward, creating an air vortex that blasts foes, so it's, it's a, it, you can hit more than one enemy, and possibly inflicts bleeding. Great attack. If they're lined up, Hit him with this. Bleed him. Fireball damage. Crazy. And the last attack, Zephyr Break. 
60 36, pretty good damage too. Emit a powerful gale of wind that clears all clouds and pushes creatures back five meters, possibly inflicting off balance. So it also comes with a push attack. And when an enemy is off balance, enemy has disadvantage on strength and dexterity checks and attack rolls against it have advantage. Boom. So yeah, this weapon kind of comes with a lot of positives. All right, if you're throwing, if you are throwing, if you're a throwing barbarian, throwing Eldritch Knight, this weapon is really, really good. Possibly your best in slot, probably, okay? And you can get this weapon and the Band of Mystic Scoundrel and in the jungle, all right? The Nairuna will be in here in a little chest. You can lockpick it. I decided to punch it, because <laughs> that's what my monk does. Um, but I'm about to show you where to get both of these items. We're gonna exit. We're gonna exit through this portal here. And we'll be at the circus. The circus is the first thing that you'll be running into probably. Okay. In Act 3. Uh, you enter through here. Right. And then you turn left. Boom. Here's the circus. You got to pass a couple dialogue checks to get in. And then you'll see this Jin. Genie. Akabi. All right. He runs the Wheel of, wheel, the wheel of Fortune mini game here at the circus. And if you talk to him and spin the wheel, you'll always lose. And the reason why you always lose is because he has a, he, he has a ring. He has a ring in his inventory. You have to... So this is how I would do it. You have to pickpocket this ring off of him. You gotta pickpocket this ring. If you pickpocket the ring, then his machine will automatically let you win, and then he'll teleport you, one of your characters, the one that was talking to him, to that jungle to get the Band of Mystic Scoundrel and the Night Rulna. Okay? Now how I recommend doing it is obviously having your highest dex person do it as well. Okay? And you're going to have someone talk to him while you're stealing. It just makes it easier. You know what I'm saying? And this, this same method can be used to steal off of vendors. And that's what I did. And basically, I was I was super rich by, by Act 3 by doing that method. But yeah, you got to pickpocket this ring off of this dude. He'll send that character that he was talking to that spun the wheel to the jungle. You got to fight a few, you got to fight a few uh, Velociraptors in there. And you can find these really, really good items. Bang, bang, and bang, bang. Um, okay. Y'all gonna have to help me with this vendor name. I'm gonna try, but I'm probably gonna get it wrong. All right, let's give it a go. X Vik Yap. X Vik Yap. Okay, <laughs> this is a Dragonborn you can find uh, in Act 3, one of the first vendors that you run into. It's right across the street from the circus. Okay. And there's a couple items in here that I want to show y'all. All right. Uh, first is the shield. Swire's sled board. The shield shrouds the wearer with Forest Conduit at the start of its turn in combat. Forest Conduit is basically, um, if, 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 if it takes damage, it like repels as force damage in a six meter radius. Right. And this can go along with uh, some of those builds that, you know, uh, thrive off of reflect damage builds that want to get hit to do damage like that one wizard build that I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a build guy later for you know what I'm saying this would probably fit that and I definitely will try that so I sled board next item that I want to um I think the last item that I want to show here <laughs> is actually the the bone spike garb you gain 15 temporary hit points whenever you rage Reduce all incoming damage by two. When the wearer is struck by the melee attack, the attacker takes two piercing damage. This is just a solid uh, clothing. If you, you know, if you're going the pure barbarian style where you're not wearing any armor or any shields, so you get the unarmored benefits from barbarians, you can rock this. Um, tell me at the time, really. It's pretty solid. 15 temporary hit points is, is, is pretty good. And it also gets reduced damage, so. If you are playing one of those pure barbarian builds, this is probably one of them go-tos. Um, and that's it about this vendor. That's all that X Vikiap has. Okay. All right. Next item. The Martial Exertion Gloves. What is Martial Exertion exactly? Push past your physical limits. L look at look at limits. Taking six to thirty-six piercing damage to gain an, ad an additional attack per turn and to double your movement speed. This is kind of like having haste. Except you're not going to be lethargic afterwards. It recovers after a short rest, so you could do it after every fight. 6 to 36 damage is kind of a lot, but if you put on a character, like on a bow character, like I'm about to do, 
this these gloves would shine uh especially for fighters because if you get if you give fighters an extra attack and they're level 11 fighters which is i almost have an 11 a level 11 fighter right here that means that's three extra attacks so these gloves would shine on those fighter 11s um i'm gonna test it out as soon as my fighter is level 11 and i'll probably make a video about it so watch out for that but yes don't sleep on these gloves there are a lot of good gloves in this game that add damage that do this that do that but getting an extra attack is for uh, especially for attack for classes that attack multiple times in a turn it's pretty sweet oh and you can find this here uh so we are where the iron hands are okay i guess i should go up a ladder and show you exactly where it is you know um but if you happened to help um you don't even have to help wolbrin but it leads you down here and let me just show where i am just so y'all know so you can you can access through here the rivington general there's a hatch okay uh, the Rivington General is the shop that I showed you earlier, right? Um, there's a hatch down here that you can go down and you can talk to the Iron Hands. This hatch is going to be locked though. So the, the, the real way to get here is through the back end. And let me show you guys where the back end is located from. Because that way you have to unlock it through a lever or a lever. Root route, tomato, tomato. Um, let me just show you all where it is real quick. We move on to the next item so the real entrance to the iron hands to get these gloves and to talk to the, uh, the iron hand deep gnomes is over here still in the first map of act three rivington go a little north it's uh, north of the sword coast coast couriers where you can do a little dialogue to get a little bit of extra money by the way and it's right here to get these pretty sweet gloves the silver sword of the astral Plane. Now, first thing, first thing I want to mention, I know you can get this item in Act 1 if you do Command Drop, if you do Disarming Attack. I'm 100% aware of that, okay? But I wanted to, I wanted to leave and wait for it because, you know, the game really wants you to get it in Act 3. And having this item in Act 1, it really defeats the purpose, purpose of progression because whoever your gift yankee fighter barbarian is in the group they're going to be wearing this for the rest of the game <laughs> pretty much you know so i want i don't want to show it in the act one video i could have but i chose not to because it really belongs in act three okay and what does it do when wielded by a gith yankee this weapon deals an additional one to six uh, psychic damage a, a gith yankee holding this weapon has advantage on intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws and uh, Resistance to psychic damage and cannot be charmed. It's a plus three weapon. It comes with an attack called Soul Breaker that can stun the enemy. It's just super good. If you have a Gith Yankee, mainly a person on your team, they could be packed with the blade, they could be a fighter, they could be a barbarian. Give this to them. It's really good. Okay? And of course, you can get this. Um, first, you want to go talk to Raphael, who is over here. Uh, Raphael is over here. You talk to Raphael in this area. Okay? Uh, the Kithrak Voss, the guy you get the weapon from, will be talking to him. They'll be arguing. Okay, you're gonna get the Orphic Hammer from from Raphael. All right, you're gonna bring the Orphic Hammer over here. At Charas Cares, uh, the bar or whatever the fuck, and he's gonna give you. If you say you're gonna free Orpheus, you don't have to free Orpheus. By the way, if you say you're gonna free him, he'll give you the sword, and then bang, there it is. Entharl Danthalon. Okay. Uh, this is a vendor that you may or may not have come across uh, And if you haven't that is unfortunate because he sells some pretty good items Okay um, And I guess I'm just gonna show you what they are first item. I want to show you all from this vendor Gauntlets of the war master targets have disadvantage on saving throws against your maneuver and weapon actions All right, this is obviously made specifically for battle masters I have a battle master in my group, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy these and test them out. I mean, if they have disadvantage against saving throws, then it looks like, uh, you know, disarming attacks, fainting attacks, goading attacks, that's all gonna work. And if you're playing a character that relies on the battle master maneuvers, then may these may be the gloves for you. 
that's why i want to show these gloves next item horns of the berserker you you gain a plus two bonus to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have already taken damage which is pretty much all the time right and then he has another effect unarmed and melee attacks will deal an extra two necrotic damage as long as you don't have your full health which is probably all the time if you don't deal any damage you can just like deal one point of damage to your character by the way and have this active at all times just letting y'all know <laughs> okay uh if you don't deal any damage this turn you take one to four necrotic damage which is probably never gonna happen this seems like it is made for melee builds maybe in, even specifically a monk build and lo and behold i have punchy boy over here who was a monk and i'm going to definitely buy these and equip this on my monk all right that's the next item third item i want to show you all from this vendor cloak of displacement this is a very classic DD item at the beginning of the wearer's turn the cloak activates granting enemies disadvantage on attack rolls that target the wearer this effect lasts until the wearer takes damage i don't think this is better than the cloak of um protection because cloak of protection as you can see here ac plus one saving throw plus one that's kind of invaluable you know what i'm saying it's kind of priceless uh but i'd say as far as power level goes cloak of displacement is right there i'd say it's it is second close to first and if you uh if one of your party members needs some defense and you already have someone wearing the cloak of protection then go ahead and put the cloak of displacement on them okay it's it's a very very good cloak all right and the last item i want to show you all from this vendor is this one so i i just found this one right now harmonic dueler it's your normal blue item it's a plus one weapon whatever but what, what's really cool about this weapon is the mellow harmony you make a performance check success granting all your melee attacks additional damage equal your to your charisma modifier and this lasts for 10 turns um yeah if you have max charisma that is a plus five to each of your attacks so if you're playing a melee dual wield bard you're probably going to be using this right now then again you would probably have to go blade uh warlock pack to the blade to make your charisma fire you know to stack this and that sounds pretty crazy in fact i might i might even make a build off of this weapon specifically but yeah i saw this weapon and i thought to myself yeah a pack to the blade uh two wielding bard is probably going to use this and there you go that's the best items that i found on this guy you can found enthral dantalon over here at dantalon's dancing axe let me go and just step outside actually let me show you all so we are in so this this is uh the first map in act three rivington i'm gonna go north here's the south span worms crossing waypoint and go a little bit up and before you talk to the bridge people it'll be on your left right here bang and the vendor will be right here okay and he sells the pretty sweet items that i just showed you i'm going to remove again gone to the war master horns of the berserker cloak of displacement and harmonic dueler baldurin's giant slayer yes sir possibly the best melee weapon in the game on a hit double the damage from your strength modifier this weapon grants you advantage on attack rolls against large huge or gargantuan creatures plus three weapon <sighs> comes with giant form grow to a fearsome size your weapons deal an additional 1d6 and you gain 27 temporary hit points and advantage on strength checks and saving throws this stacks with the, with the elixir of colossus i believe i could be wrong on that but i'm pretty sure it does and it comes with top of the big folk deal additional damage equal to your proficiency bonus on a hit large huge or gargantuan creatures take an additional 2 to 12 bludgeoning damage and must succeed a strength saving throw or fall prone this weapon is crazy if you're playing a melee build whether it be just straight up melee strength pack of the blade charisma this this works with pack of the blade by the way you know what i'm saying it's just it's the best melee weapon two-hander if we're talking two-hander this is the best one all right i'm currently working on a build where i combine this with the offhand monk attacks and do crazy damage expect that to, expect that to be on my channel if it is if it already hasn't been on there okay but i mean if y'all already know you guys can find this by killing ansor the level 17 dragon and this can be found 
I'm going to show that a little later to show how you can find this place. Um, but another item I want to show y'all, obviously besides this beautiful great sword, is the helm. The helm's down here. I just killed him, Helm of Baldurin. And this helm's crazy too. I'm going to skip the cutscene. What does this helm do? The helmet heals you for two hit points at the beginning of every turn. So it's kind of like a cheat death as well, because if you get downed, it'll heal you, so you'll be fine, and you can still do your turn. You have a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws. You can't be stunned, and you can't be critically hit. As far as defense goes, probably the best helmet in the game. It comes with AC, it comes with saving throws, you can't be stunned, and you can't be crit, and it comes with a heal. Definitely the best helmet when it comes to defense. All right. Um... Now I'm going to show y'all where we got these and how to get these. It's very easy. All right. We are here at Worms Rock Fortress. Okay. Here's the waypoint right here. You want to go down here. Down to the prison. All right. Sleeping guard. Unlock the door. Then you got to turn left over here. And you need a lightning spell. You're going to cast a lightning spell on this dragon head torch. And on this dragon head torch. And there you go. It'll open. You keep going. Okay. It'll lead you to this room. So this gourd, this big ass door is going to be closed. There's going to be a puzzle here. Or not a puzzle, but a trial. Okay, kind of a puzzle. Some of them are puzzles. So there's going to be a trial here. It's going to be a trial here. It's going to be a trial here. There's going to be a trial here. And I'm not going to say how to solve each one individually. It's going to take too long. But this one, make sure you have remove curse or greater restoration. For this one, hit the left. Hit the left, kid. Okay, you'll know what I mean when, when I say that. Hit the left, kid. For this one, uh, just use lightning again uh, on the king. Destroy the king with the lightning spell. And for this one, it's just fighting. And then this door will open. And you will meet big boy, Anser. If you've never done it before, you're going to have a little cutscene. He'll be here. He's going to look all dead. Just click on him as if you were going to loot him. You'll start the, the cutscene. And you can get... The sweet ass sword and helmet. Vicar, humble toes. This vendor. First, let me show you what this vendor is. So, this vendor is in the Storm First Tabernacle. Um, and he's actually not marked as a vendor, but it, it is right next to the Basilisk Gate. You're gonna turn right into it's kind of a church, right? There's like a bunch of gods you could you could pray to, and they might give you some kind of blessing or whatever. Um, this guy's actually a vendor. He's a vendor and he sells a couple good items that I want to show you guys. Uh, first is the reviving hands. When you heal a creature, it gains the effect of blade horde. When you revive a creature, it gains the effect of death horde. And it also comes with a free revivify, which is kind of useless in Baldur's Gate 3 because we have withers. Um, but this can easily replace the gloves that I've been wearing this whole time that I got from Act 1 with the Investigate Kaka Quest, Hellrider's Pride, which is the lesser version of these gloves. So if you've been wearing these the whole time, this is just the upgraded version and probably the best cleric support item because it it just gives so much, you know? You can make them basically resistant to physical damage, give them a cheat death, and come with a, come with a revive, you know what I'm saying? Come with a phoenix down, if you will. <laughs> To my fucking Final Fantasy fan. Um, but yeah, reviving hands over here. And you could also buy the mantle of the Holy Warrior. I actually missed this the first time around that I went to this vendor. This is um, a concentration spell. Radiate a holy power that emboldens nearby allies. Their weapon attacks deal an additional wonderful radiant damage. So if you are uh, a support character and you're holding Staff of the Arcane Blessing, you kind of only have to cast Blessed once. Right, and you can concentrate on another spell because Mistress Blessing is the bless that stays on, on on your team. So you can concentrate on something else, and something like Crusader's Mantle just gives them your team more damage. So on top of Bless, which gives them a bonus to their attack rolls and their saving throws, you are now giving your teammates one to four, one d four more damage in their attacks. So you're kind of giving them everything they need in a the battle. So 
I'm definitely going to uh, put this on for my support clear player. And it's also not even that expensive. It's like, what, a thousand? Okay. Um, and yeah, there's also another item I want to show in this place at the St Storm Shore Tabernacle. Um, and that's going to be in a little bit. But yes, Vicar Humble Toes, he's a vendor. The Amulet of the Devout. You gain a plus two bonus to spell save DC. Crazy. And if you have the channel Divinity ability, you gain an additional use of it very good for clerics but i want to point out this is definitely the best in slot for uh that tempest sorcerer cleric wizard build running around okay uh I'll definitely, I'll definitely be making a build guide if i haven't already on the channel all right that is best in slot because that means you can use destructive wrath another another time okay and also just adding any bonus to spell save dc is crazy i think when i was testing stuff on my sorcerer i i was able to get it to 27 28 spell save dc crazy okay uh and you can find this underneath the storm shore tabernacle the vendor that we just talked to um there's a hatch around there it's pretty easy to spot but um you know you, you, you you're gonna have to be invis opening the hatch because it is, it is locked you're gonna have to cast knock or something and then go into the hatch invis as a group uh, or just one person invis because the game for some reason thinks you're all invis for that so not not too hard to get not too hard to get down here although i will suggest just grabbing this the more things you grab from this room there really isn't anything else good in this room by the way this is like the best thing by far there are some other like chests here but the more things you grab the harder the consequences okay let's just say um the consequence is pretty harsh so i suggest just grabbing this and getting the hell out amulet of the devout boots of psionic movement when a gift yankee cast fly their next melee weapon attack deals an additional one to four psychic damage okay and it comes with fly even better all right so every time you fly you land you do damage with your weapon the electric psychic damage all right and you can find this uh off of one of the gift yankees chirai Harak. Okay. Uh, and this is, of course, in the hideout of your boy. All right. Let me go and go outside to show you guys exactly where I am. Um, go over here. Out this door. Out this little barrel. You got to kill a bunch of 1 HP rats. So make sure you got a nice, hefty, large AoE spell like Cloud Killer or some shit. I used Ice Storm. Or sleet storm, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it is here. We are in the final map. Well, not the final map. The sewers of the final map. But this is uh, the, the the big city in Act 3 where everyone lags, including myself, even with my beast computer. Okay. Here's the Basilisk Case Waypoint. Here's the Storm Shore Tabernacle. Just a little bit, just a little bit. To the left of that is the Elf Song Tavern, where your 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 dream visitor is gonna be like, "Hey, I used to live here, by the way." And you go downstairs, and then you have that Gith Yankee interaction, and you can get those sweet boots that I forgot to loot. Damon, Act Three, Damon. Yes, if you keep him alive, the vendor in Act One. If you keep him alive. The vendor in Act 2 at last light. If you keep him alive here, until this point, he adds a few more items that are pretty damn good. Let me show you them, okay? First one is the gloves. Legacy of the Masters. Gain a plus two bonus to attack. And damage rolls with weapons. Uh, having a better chance to hit and doing more damage at the same time is kind of what you're looking for in most weapon attack builds so these gloves pretty good i will definitely be buying these and i'll be equipping them on one of my weapon attack users next boots of persistence you gain freedom of movement and long strider now if you have a good support on your team then you shouldn't need these boots because you should always have long strider and freedom of movement because they're until long rest spells that don't require concentration but if you don't have a support with those things and you know one of your one of your melee people are having trouble moving around and and, and they're slow bang boost of persistence right here okay 
and the last item I want to show you off from this vendor. I think the second best item, second best armor in the game. Armor of Persistence. All incoming damage is reduced by two. All, first of all, it's 20 AC. That's the, that's the highest we've come across so far in this video, that is. Um, there's only one other armor with the, with the higher AC, and that, that'll be later. You gain resistance and blood and blade ward. Okay. So, um, you have a 1d4 bonus to saving throws, and you're pretty much resistant to physical damage. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, this is the best heavy armor again, so far. Not in the game, but so far. There's one other that surpass it. We're going to get to that later. The pro Here's the problem I have with this, with this item. If you look down here, <laughs> it's pretty expansive. For me, I'd much rather just buy the gloves and the boots and scrolls and potions and very useful stuff, you know? Especially that, not, that I know that there's a better armor out there than this. Okay? So for me to you... I would not suggest buying this. This is a lot of money that you could spend again on scrolls and just more useful stuff. Okay. The armor that you get from the Adamantine Forge and the armor that I'm about to show you later is good enough. You really don't need this. But if you brought, if you're balling like that, if you got a pickpocketer on your team and you're basically a, you, you know, you got all the monies, then for, for sure buy this. But for me, I has still have yet to found a playthrough where I felt it was worth buying this armor. As good as it, good as it is, it's expensive as fuck. All right. And there you go. And of course, what do you find, Damon? We are in the big city in Act 3. Okay. El Song Tavern is to the west of that, to the south of the graveyard. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mainly, I went over here first because I want to wrap up Karlak's storyline and I was told this is where I need to go. Okay, but there you go. There's Damon, Act 3 Vendor with all that goodies. The dead shot. The number you need to roll. A critical hit while attacking if reduced by one. This effect can stack. I am currently working on a build that basically runs all the critical stacking items. Even the champion stuff. Along with Elixir of Viciousness, I'm currently working on that. I I, I I did that for the dual hand crossbow build. That's on, that's on my channel if you haven't checked that out. The Bard dual hand crossbow build that freaking slaps, right? Um, but I didn't do one with this with this bow. And not only that, that does it stack with crits, the wielder doubles their proficiency bonus when rolling range attacks with this weapon. Um, so you might not, not even have to run something like a Risky Ring. You know what I'm saying? You can just run another damage ring. Um, so I'm trying something with this bow. It's a really good bow. What do you can get this? You can get this at Fitz, the firecracker. The reason why I'm not showing any other items because this is the only item that she has. That's kind of worth buying. And you can find Fitz, the crack, the, the, the firecracker, right next to Sorcerer Sundries, the mage library. She's right here. You probably have found her before. You probably know where she is. But just in case you don't, there she is. I'll show you on the map as well. Bang, bang. And there's the other vendor here that I will go over in just a second. The Armor of Agility. This is best in slot for pretty much any one of your dexterity characters because it has base 17 AC and it adds your dexterity modifier on top of that. So at this point in the game, your dexterity on your dexterity character is probably 20, giving you a plus five bonus. So your AC, with just this armor and your uh, dex will art will be 22. That's not including a shield. That's not including anything from cloak of protection or evasive boots or ring of protection. Um, so you can get your AC really, really high on one of your sneaky, you know, high damage dealing agility dexterity characters. Okay. And not, not, not to mention, it also gives saving throw plus two. And I'm pretty sure that applies to all your saving throws. So this armor is kind of cracked. And you can get this, again, right next to the vendor I just showed you. Okay, she was over here. Fitzy fits the firecracker. My boy, Gloomy Fentonson. Who, okay, whoever made these names are, definitely use the generator. <laughs> definitely use the online generator. And of course, it's right next to Sorceress Sundries, the mage library. Right here, Gloomy Fentonson, the armor of agility. Lorokin's 
projection. In my opinion, this is by far the best vendor in the game. Not only because it gives some really good items, but it gives really good scrolls. I'll show everything. Just give me a second. We'll go over the items first. Then we'll go over some scrolls that are super good. And um, yeah, this vendor is my favorite vendor. So first, the quick spell gloves. Cantrips that cost an action, cost a bonus action instead. This effect can be used once per short rest, so pretty often. Okay. Uh, and this is normally tied in with the Eldritch Blast build. In fact, this is a, this, these are the gloves that I used in my Eldritch Blast build. Uh, mostly because I felt the spell might gloves I was missing, right? And I, and I'm, um, I'm all about damage, but I'm also about, you know, consistency. And with quick spell gloves, which can be used pretty much every fight because it's, because of the short rest feature, I was firing off an extra Eldritch Blast, you know, killing off another enemy because I Eldritch Blast build. It's the strongest build that I've seen so far. So yeah, these can be found. Let me let, let me go and sell the items first and the scrolls, and then I'll show you guys the location. But you guys already probably know where this is. Uh, next item, Vest of Soul Rejuvenation. Whenever the wearer succeeds on a saving throw against a spell, they regain one to four hit points. The wearer can use a reaction to make an unarmed strike against any attacker that misses, and it comes with AC plus two. Now, I'll, I know a lot of monk builds are using this as their best in slot, but... I don't know, this, this this chest, this clothing to me is very mid, um, and it costs a lot of money too. Personally, I don't think I would use this on my monk. The The best thing on this, on this chest is the plus two AC to me, you know? Um, using a reaction to make an unarmed attack against any attacker that misses. Normally monks don't have very high AC anyway, so they're gonna get hit. Um, so to me, this vest is kind of meh, but I know a lot of builds are using it and maybe you guys can convince me as well on why, why it's pretty good. So there's a, here's a monk, a monk chest there for y'all. The next item I want to show is the, is the birthright, the charisma plus two. Now, if I'm not mistaken, some of these items might not be available if you like progress in the sorcerer's sundries, like questing line so uh, you want to go in here you want to talk to the vendor you want to buy your stuff first and then you want to do whatever you want in the sorcerer sundries i could be wrong on that but someone told me and you know i just want to i just want to make sure y'all ain't missing stuff and have to whole, start a whole new campaign i see some of you in the comments saying damn i missed that item now i gotta start a whole another campaign and i mean none of us ain't got time for that shit well except for me because i'm a loser but you know <laughs> no I, I, I just love playing games but anyway um so yeah, birthright plus two charisma, and you can get that all the way to 22. It's, I mean, that's just so good. That's just so good. Not even, not even for Eldritch Blast builds, but anyone that uses charisma for their spell casting modifier, right? Uh, you could even use this as Pact of the Blade. It's just solid. Then you stack this on top of the mirror to give you plus two even more. You can get up to four, 24 charisma, and it's not even hard. You know what I'm saying? So boom, birthright, and let me just show you all some scrolls that are really good here. Disintegrate. One of the highest damage dealing single target spells. The good thing about Disintegrate is at, at, at the very least, it's doing 50 damage. And that's still a lot of damage. You know what I'm saying? Um, my favorite scroll, the scroll that I use a lot, is Globe of Invulnerability. I use this because I combine this with the Mind Sanctuary um, <clears throat> power, Illithid power. Turning all your bonus actions and actions the same. I combine this with that and I keep everyone in there and I kind of just go crazy. I kind of just go crazy. And also a little, a little hint. Sometimes, you know, when you got to keep NPCs alive, sometimes you don't, you don't have the feign death on, on hand. Sometimes you don't have the sanctuary on hand. This will definitely keep the NPCs with very stupid AI <laughs> and coding, this will keep them alive. And you're definitely gonna need this at some point in the game. I don't wanna spoil anything, but this scroll and this spell in general is very, very useful, all right? Chain Lightning, really, really good, especially if you're playing that Tempest Cleric build. Um, crazy damage, it bounces off, you know, three enemies, it's very solid. And um, if you're a wizard, you don't even have to be a max level wizard. You can just learn this, 
it's your evocation and then you have chain lightning on on hand it's kind of crazy okay um what are some other spells that i like i also like wall of fire no oh, of course the fly dimension door greater invisibility these are these are scrolls that i kind of always keep around i don't necessarily buy them but if i have some extra money i will but if i find them on the ground i definitely keep scrolls like that dimension door fly greater invisibility and invisibility or misty step those scrolls i always keep on hand because those are the, those are the kind of spells that you might need on a pinch you know what i'm saying as far as the damage spells for these wall of fire is an amazing control concentration damage spell that your fire sorcerer will definitely like you know what i mean uh, i also have been liking using ice storm right even on my fire sorcerer because ice storm <sighs> fireball is great but fireball covers a medium-sized aoe ice storm is like double fireballs aoe radius and when i need to kill fucking 30 rats in one turn because they're so annoying I'm gonna use Ice Storm. So I like Ice Storm. You know what I'm saying? Um, what are some other spells? Feign Death. If you're not using the Feign Death Sanctuary combo, something's wrong with you. That combo's crazy for keeping NPCs alive. And yeah, man, just Larokin's Projection. It's right here, right when you walk into Sorcery Sundries. There's the entrance. As soon as you walk in, talk to the Projection. Say you wanna trade before you do anything, just so the items stay there. Say you wanna trade and then get these freaking goodies. The Marco Hesh gear. I mean, if you don't know about this item and you got a spell cast in your party, you're fucking up. <laughs> okay. You gain plus one bonus spell save DC and spell attack rolls. It comes with arcane battery, where basically you can use any level spell, including level six spells, and it doesn't cost a spell slot. Activate it over here. Okay. On the passive side. It's a plus three. It's a plus two weapon, which I don't think matters unless you're doing spell attack rolls. Okay. Um, but the most important feature is Kareska's favor. What is Kareska's favor? Kareska's favor. You can imbue your weapon with stuff. Acid. This comes with. Um, cloud kill and ray of sickness and noxious fumes. You could honestly make a build out of each and every single one of these like elements low key. Okay. There's cold, fire, lightning. Lightning is the most popular because lightning, um, lightning, uh, can be used with elders blasts to make it even stronger. Okay. If you haven't watched my video, I suggest watching it. Uh, you could do freaking poison. You could do thunder. Okay, I chose fire. I'm, I'm working on a fire build right now. Pure fire build, pure sorcerer build. Maybe not pure sorcerer, maybe a, a, two, uh, a level two dip into wizard for that, you know, shape, uh, that, that sculpt spells feature. Just so I don't kill my team with wall of fire and fireballs. Um, but yeah, you pretty much, you can imbue your weapon with any of these elements and it, you're your proficiency bonus <clears throat> gets added onto the damage for every single one of the elements on top of you know if you're a sorcerer you go with the dr draconic feature it's on, it's on top of all that all right and each each element comes with spells that don't cost a spell slot on your side right here this with fire it comes with fireball and wall of fire um with lightning it comes with lightning bolt and chain lightning seriously this is absolutely there's no debate this is absolutely best in slot for most, if not all, of the spellcaster builds out there. All right, Marco Hesh gear. Where can you find this? You can find this. So in the Sorcery Sundries library, um, in the place that, that you just saw me in, when you go upstairs, they'll put up four portals. You want to go in the leftmost portal, okay, and do the, whole, and do the interaction there with the real Larokin. Then you want to go on the balcony in that room, and you're gonna jump down or fly off or misty step down, whatever. Okay, and then you're gonna try to find an entrance. So you're gonna be out here, you're gonna fly down here. You're gonna try to find an entrance. It's probably gonna be a wooden board, just break the board. And then you wanna have sea invisibility on because then you can only see these these plaques here if you have sea invisibility. You should have Valo's eye, you know, if you've been following my guides. 
So you should always have the invisibility on you. And then you can see these, and one of them is going to say below. Click the weave button up. You got to be careful though. You don't, you don't want it. There's like four weave buttons. You press the wrong one, you're going to get attacked by a bunch of arcane turrets. And you don't want that. That's a waste of time. Click the weave button on the below one. It takes you below. There will be the staff and the robe in these two parts. You got to make a 20 DC um, intelligence check. So whatever your mage is, or if you're bard, make those checks. The great thing is you can keep trying. You don't have to use inspiration points. You can keep trying because I don't know why. <laughs> they should have had a limit, honestly, because these, these items are crazy. Um, but yeah, Marco Heshgear and the Robe of the Weave, which I might as well include it in this uh, same part. Plus some bonus spells, these spell attack rolls, AC plus two, just your, you know, run in the mill, common, um, pretty damn good spell casting clothing. All right. It doesn't get much better than this. It really doesn't. So yeah, man, get these items, get a spell caster. These are a must for sure. The Red Knight's final stratagem. All right. This is one of them legendary books that you get at the Sorcerer's Vault. I'll tell you how to get here in a second. But from this book, you get this scroll. Scroll of Artistry of War. All right. Summon the apparitions of six master strategists. Each apparition strikes a target of your choosing, dealing 8 to 18 force damage on hit. And this is basically a better magic missile. There's no save. Okay. You choose your targets and it just does damage damage. It's pretty damn good. All right, if you want guaranteed damage, you're probably sick of using Magic Missile by now. This is just a better version of it. All right. Um, and of course, if you have a wizard in your party, all they got to do is right click and learn the spell and they have it in, in their spell list forever. So I was just so damn good. Okay. Um, and you get here. So in that place that I showed you, the where you get the Marco Hesh gear, right? And the Robe of the Weave. That same place, when you click that uh, uh, that button to go above, you're going to keep walking around until you see one of the weave buttons that leads to vaults. And it will lead exactly to the spot, and you'll find the book in this display case right here. All right. The Annals of Corsus. All right, I'm showing this book because um, I believe it is a part of Gale's uh, storyline, if you're interested in progressing that. Okay. And of course, the book also comes with a scroll of dethrone, another uh, pretty freaking good damage spell. Okay, um, and what I want to point out about this is it does plus twenty. You see how this says one ten d six plus twenty, so that twenty is added on no matter what you roll. So even if you roll, roll, um, it's not, it's kind of similar to to disintegrate. Disintegrate will do fifty at the minimum if you land the hit. You know what I'm saying? So dethrone is kind of similar, kind of lower de uh, damage, but it all is also a different damage type. If something is weak to necrotic, they will get absolutely smashed by this spell. Okay, same thing. If you got a wizard, you can learn it. And you can find this one. Okay, um, it'll be it'll be a door marked Carsis, right? There are two doors. One is marked Carsis, Elminster. You go in the Carsis room. And, and you loot, it, loot all the good stuff in there. Comes with pretty good scrolls. And you can find the Annals of Carsis in there. The Pyro Quickness Hat. One of my favorite hats. Especially if you're a fire damage dealer. When you deal fire damage with a leveled spell, that basically means just like fireball or some shit. You burn yourself and gain an additional bonus action this round. Burn. It's not too bad. It's pretty much having... You know, it pretty much goes in line with all the other fire items when you apply heat to yourself. Same shit. Listen, any, any, anything in this game, if, you, if, if you've played D&D for a while, or if you've played this game for a while, you know, having extra actions, having extra bonus actions, it's just how you play. If you want to min-max, and you want to beat, and you want to win combats, and just have, and just not give any chance to, to, to the enemy, you want as many actions and bonus actions as possible. Okay, and just just imagine this hat with a fighter, two levels of fighter, three levels of rogue for thief, and now you have the you have the ability to have two actions and two bonus actions, and it doesn't even cost that much. You know, you can get action surge back on a short rest. That's just crazy, and then that's not including haste. 
That's not including Elixir of Bloodlust. That's not including, if you want to go really deep into it, you know, wholeness of body for Monk, which gives you an extra bonus action. Like, <clears throat> I'm working on builds all the time. I'm theory crafting. And I want to make a build where you can do just endless amount of actions and bonus actions. I think you can get to like four each <laughs> or something crazy like that. But yeah, the Pyro Quickness hat. This is, this is in the room of the Elminster in this chest right here. All right. And I definitely wanted to point out this hat. If you are a fire build, you are 100% using this hat because an extra bonus action, especially if you're a sorcerer, if you're a sorcerer, you have to use this hat because that means you can cast two. It costs six sorcery points, but you can cast two uh, extra fire spells in that turn. Crazy. The Tharkiat Codex or Tharkiat, whatever you want to say it. Uh, if you read this book, I just read it. Okay. Uh, what's going to happen to your character is they're going to have a curse on them where their life gets reduced. Their constitution gets reduced by five. It's kind of huge. Okay. But good thing we have a support character with greater restoration so all we got to do is remove that okay he's on the wrong person oh i have no more spell slots it's okay i have squirrels <laughs> i'm blind okay anyway see now the curse is removed and now we have 20 extra hit points be careful who you use this on i think i just used it on the wrong person it is what it is <laughs> um but you get now every long this is a permanent buff every long rest you are rewarded 20 temporary hit points it's pretty sweet you can find this in the same elminster room as the pyro quickness hat all right it'll be here inside this box you gotta make a dc 20 lock pick get it read it on the character that you want extra hit points on most likely your tank or that you're really really squishy character that keeps dying put it on them remove the curse easy 28 temporary and 20 temporary hit points is a lot by the way Viconia's walking fortress Undoubtedly the best shield in the game. Alright. I believe it's the only legendary shield. Alright. 3 AC. That's the highest you can get on a shield in this game. When a foe hits you with a melee attack, you can use a reaction dealing 2 to 8 force damage and knock it prone unless they succeed a dexterity saving throw. So just a better version of shield bash. You gain advantage on saving throws against spells. Spell attack rolls against you at disadvantage. You're strong against spellcasters. It also comes with a couple things here. Reflective shell. A, prote a protective shell envelops you. It reflects any projectiles targeted at you back at their point of origin. This is a bonus action. So now we're good against archers. And of course, warding bond. So good. Warden ally that gain resistance to all damage. Plus one bonus to their AC and saving throws. Each time the ally takes damage, you take the same amount of damage. Okay. Um... Yeah, just a really good support type of move. You know, you want a warding bond your carry, right? The person that, or the person that just keeps dying every fight, right? You warding bond them so you could take some of the heat, okay? Um, and it really doesn't doesn't get any better from, than this shield. It's the best shield in the game, straight up. All right, and of course you can get this off of Vaconia Devere. Where is this exactly? This is in the House of Grief. All right, you want to keep going in the House of Grief. You want to go as deep as you can until you find this room. It's going to be full of a bunch of bunch of people. And if you're following Shadow Hearts storyline, it should be pretty easy to get here. But if you're not, you know, there you go. House of Grief, Viconia. Also, her other items aren't too bad. Handmade is Mace. Sets your strength to 18, no matter, no matter what. And, and it comes with a bit of poison damage. And of course, her robe, um, uh, Shield of Faith also grants you plus two bonus to all saving throws on top of plus two AC. So not bad, but of course her best item is by far Baconia's Walking Fortress at the House of Grief. The Mirror of Loss. This can be found all the way at the end of the House of Grief. What does this mirror do? Well, you talk to it, you gotta make a few checks, you give up minus two to a stat, it gives you plus two to a stat, all right? And don't worry about the minus two to a stat because it does, it counts as a curse. So all you gotta do is either use remove curse or greater restoration on the character that got the minus two and it'll be gone. So it's just a, it's just a positive net no matter what, pretty much if you have the necessary spells, okay? The checks are intelligence checks. So I'd recommend using 
uh, where, do, where did I put that helmet? I recommend using the warped band of intellect. Set the wearer's intelligence score to 17. Okay, unless you're already, unless you're putting it on your wizard, and most likely you don't have one, because sorcerers are just sorcerers are just OP. Okay, um, but yeah, you wanna uh, you wanna put this helmet on, and of course you can get this from Lump in Act One. So if you didn't get it, it is, that's unfortunate. But this helmet helps a lot, and then you wanna use something like uh, Enhance Ability, the Intelligence version. It's called Fox's Cunning. You combine that helmet with this. Um, plus like a bard, some bardic inspiration, plus some guidance. You're probably going to pass that roll, uh, no matter what. The uh, DC is pretty high. It's like DC 20, 20 or 25, I think. So DC is pretty high, but if you get it, you get a, you get a plus two permanent to, to, to that stat and it lasts forever. It lasts forever. And someone told me you can get this for each of your characters. They just have to pass the checks. I don't know if that's true. I haven't tested it yet, but as soon as I have, I'll tell y'all. Um, but I, I've only used this once per, once per, on one character per playthrough because I thought that was the limit. Um, cause that, that just seems like, you know, what they, what they intended. But if you can use this on all your characters, that's kind of crazy. All right. But in any case, mirror of loss at the end of the house of grief, plus two to permanently twist that it's very, very good. Especially for end game when you're reaching those levels of power. It's Hellsick. The vendor at Devil's Fee. Okay, you guys probably recognize her. Um, the thing about Helsick is, when you first talk to her, she actually doesn't have her full shop, right? Because she's kind of secretive about her stuff, okay? Um, to activate her full shop, the way I do there's multiple ways to do it. The way I do it is I, in the House of Grief, there's a little this little thing, there's, there's, a, there's a little note or a book in one of the interrogation rooms in the House of Grief. You read one of those and it'll activate a new dialogue with her, okay? And you make a deal with her, you know, to get it. She helps you get into the House of Hope, Raphael's house. And then she opens up her actual secret shop. And there's a couple items here that I want to show you all. For example, Cloak of the Weave, plus one bonus spell save these and spell attack rolls and it also comes with absorb elements so this is just an upgrade on the cloak of absorb elements okay and is also pretty much best in slot for any spellcaster build if you got a spellcaster you're probably going to buy this this uh cloak all right next item is so there aren't that many druid items in the game unfortunately i'm pretty sure larian studios is aware of this and hopefully they fix that there's like two or three like seriously <laughs> druids need more love for sure um, but this is, if you're a moon druid, you're probably going to want this, you know, druids specifically made to sh uh, that, that love shape shifting, you know, this will give you another wild shape charge. Not that you really need any cause they refresh after a short rest, but just in case you do, there you go. Okay. Uh, another item that I don't really like, um, Gemini gloves, cantrips targeting foes and allies can target an additional creature. The same target can be chosen twice. So, uh, the wording on this makes it seem like if you're using Eldritch Blast, it'll do another Eldritch Blast. That is not true. That is not true. It adds an extra ray every short rest. So it's actually weaker than the Quick Spell Gloves or the Spell Mic Gloves, okay? Now, I don't know if that's a bug. If they change it, then these gloves will probably be, uh, better. Okay, but for now there are better Eldritch Blast Clubs. Trust, all right? Other than that, that's pretty much the best things that Hellsick has, has. And you can find her, of course, Devil's Fee, right here, okay? Here's the lower city central wall waypoint. Just go north, here's Sorcerer Sundays. Just go north and here, and again, you wanna activate her dialogue. The way I like doing it is I like going to the House of Grief, which I already, already finished and I showed you the mirror of loss. I like going over here in one of the interrogation rooms. There's going to be a note or a book. You have to read it. It's going to be on like a, on, on like a desk. You got to read it and it'll activate her new dialogue and then make sure you talk to her with a nice charisma character. So you don't have to pay her a bunch of gold because she'll try to scam you. But if you have a high charisma character, you should be all right. Spaces hunt boots. It comes with dimension door. Pretty sweet. This is I wouldn't say an upgraded version of the disintegration 
disintegrating night walkers the near boots but i would say it is an alternate alternative because while dimension door is a better spell and can be used in a longer distance than misty step which is what those other boots come with those other boots have other qualities as well like you can be in web they're entangled right so i say these are pretty much right up there and you know a lot of builds don't really have end game boots so you're either wearing those near boots uh, or these i would recommend these these are very good i every time i find these boots per playthrough i 100 percent use them right um and you can find these off of dolor the boy dolor okay on the ground right here um and you can kill him in other places you can kill him earlier and get these boots but the safest way for me to get these because sometimes he doesn't always have them you know the safest 100 percent way for me to get these was i had to follow the investigate the murder um quest line right and be the good guy basically you want to stop all the murders and then hit dolor's last stop is here where he's going to try to murder figaro figaro the guy right here and the officer general lady um that you talked to earlier and what i just did I, I just put a globe of invulnerability on both of them and they lived you can also feign death him in sanctuary i don't know if you have to, if you have to keep him alive but for sure you have to kill dolor who will be here on the last of his murdering spree okay and once you once you do kill him he will unlock he will give you these boots and Another another item I want to point out is his weapon that he uses, Dolor Amaros. When you land a crit with this weapon, it deals an additional seven damage. Okay. Any items that give extra damage, I always take a second look at because if you stack enough of these, if you stack enough of these dice rolls, enough of these flat damage bonuses, you'll be doing crazy damage. So. I will definitely be using this in my next assassin build that I'm currently working on. Watch out for that. Okay. Um, and yeah, we are currently at the Facemaker's Boutique. Again, the last stop in Dolor's murder mystery case. And make sure you kill him and you can get the sweet boots and the sweet weapon. Mask of Soul Perception. Gain plus two bonus to attack rolls. Initiative rolls and perception checks this is a pretty solid helmet okay um this is probably better than one one of your characters is wearing go ahead and replace that with this and it also comes with detect thoughts which is actually pretty useful in dialogue occasionally you know what i'm saying so you can find this at the devil's fee where you talk to Helsick about the whole Raphael thing go upstairs it's gonna be in her room in this little chest over here Bang bang, mask of soul perception. <laughs> Mystic carry on the level twelve mummy, mummy lord. This guy has a couple good items that I want to show y'all. First, the armor of the spore keeper. The wearer gains plus one bonus to spell save DC, and when dealing necrotic damage, they deal an additional one necrotic damage. And while imbued with symbiotic entity, you can spread bang bang orange. Timax spores and hay spores. Now, I just want to let y'all know when uh, for spore druids, if if you are imbued with symbiotic entity, all of your attacks deal an additional one d6 necrotic damage. Line of this armor already applies if you're symbio if you're using symbiotic entity. Okay, so this is obviously super niche, but very very good for those who are spore druids. All right, haste. I mean, dude, if you don't know what, so this this is cool. Bibber bang does poison, Timask does poison and befuddles, but haste spore. So the thing about haste in this game, haste is a really really good spell. Potions of speed is a really really good potion, but the problem with the with that is, you become lethargic, which basically means you're stunned for one turn. You know, and that's really really bad. Like if you break concentration on haste, you you, you probably just lose. You know. But haste spores gives you the effect of haste, but doesn't have the drawback. You know what I'm saying? And all you gotta all you gotta do is keep walking back and forth between the haste spores. It's very very good. All right. 
Um, so yeah, that's Armor of the Support Keeper. The next item, probably his better item, and, the, and an item you probably already heard of, is Hood of the Weave. You gain a plus two bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. All right. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're an Eldritch Blaster, if you're any type of spellcaster, there's pretty much no reason why you wouldn't use this helm. All right. Um, the Birthright is also a very good option for spellcasters. You could pretty much just pick one, you know. Uh, and of course, if you're a wizard, this is definitely your go-to. Um, plus two bonus to spell save DC, along with the other plus two bonus to spell save DC amulet. That's a plus four. That's crazy. You can get your spell save DC 25 plus easily with the weave with the weave items. You know what I'm saying? So there you go. Hood of the weave and Harm of the Spore Keeper at Mystic Carrion. And you can find Mystic Carrion at Phil Graves Mansion. If you haven't been here, it's south of Sorcerer's Sundries. The door is outside. It's like a little wall. You gotta make a, a pretty high perception check to view it, okay? And you can either lockpick it, use knock, or destroy the door. I have a I have a beefy monk that with with a big with a big two-handed sword. So I kind of I don't lockpick anymore. I kind of just destroy stuff. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, you can find Mystic Carrion over here at Phil Graves Mansion. The Shade Slayer Cloak. While hiding, the number you need to roll a crit while attacking is reduced by one. This effect can stack. Obviously, this goes to your assassin. This goes to your long-range ranger. Okay. Um, and if you didn't know, stealthing in this game kind of goes crazy. If you're looking for a, the type of build that can beat the game with only one character, go in stealth. Also, the Darkness Devil Sight combo is pretty crazy, all right? Um, and you can find this amazing cloak at Sticky Dondo, part of the same thief guild that Maul from Act 1 is from, okay? And we are in the guild hall of the nine fingers and you could find this guild hall let me just go ahead and step outside real quick so you guys know exactly where i am you could find this guild hall near like the docking area in act three map the big uh, the big city in act three i'm gonna show you exactly where i am right now uh so here we are here is the heapside strand waypoint here's source for sundays just go a little bit to the right you got an before you get here though you gotta have, make sure you have your charisma character walk into this little alley because then these guys are going to be like who the fuck are you and then you got to be like i matter okay and then you can enter here to the guild hall and uh get the shade slayer coke from St sticky dondo the kid ring of fey wild sparks while your sorceress tides of chaos feature is active you will always trigger wild magic surge when casting spells. Now, if you don't know what this means, there is a sorcerer subclass called wild magic, and it's basically the RNG uh, one. It's like you roll the dice, you see what happens. I, it's not the strongest subclass for sorcerers, but it's easily the most fun. Okay. And um, this ring is made specifically for that build. Uh, Wild Magic Surge, basically, it's you cast a random, a magical effect, a random magical effect out of a list happens. Okay. And with this ring, even more magic, random magical effects happen. So this could either be good or bad. But um, if you are running that build, this is definitely the ring for you. And of course, you can find this. We are still in Act 3. We just beat the final version of the Hag. Okay? The Hag can be found in Act 1 and in Act 3. I don't know about Act 2, but I know she can be found in Act 1 and Act 3. And this is following the Save the save Vanra, Save the Little Girl quest, which you should do, by the way, because you get a nice reward from it. Um, but you get a final match with the Hag. And the way to, the way to beat the Hag is you gotta be, uh, there, there'll be a Healing Mushroom here, a Healing Mushroom here, and a healing mushroom here you have to make sure you beat those mushrooms and then you take out the hags uh, and then you find out which which one of the hags are real because she casts her illusion spell and then you throw a hags bane on her which if you're following the quest you should know what that is basically it makes her um throw up the kid okay and you want to make sure you do that trust me there's a good request reward for that um but yeah if you beat the hag for this last time she drops this sweet uh wild magic surge ring the Fey Semblance Amulet 
you have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. I like this amulet. Okay, you can definitely put this on one of your four characters that you're running in the game. Um, it's, this can also offset something double-edged sword like the Risky Ring that gives you disadvantage on all your saving throws. You can cut out half of that while wearing this amulet. Okay, and Mind Blast is uh, we don't fight mind we don't fight mind flares much in the game, but you do fight them, and when you do fight them and you get stunned by Mind Blast, you're probably going to get a team wipe, okay? Because that shit is really strong. So this, something like this, will help a lot, all right? Um, and you can find this. We are over here at Old Garlo's Place. Here's the Heapside Strand left. Oh, I didn't show you guys where the Hag was. So the Hag is here at the Blushing Mermaid. It's like a tavern or bar, and you, could, you have to go underneath the Blushing Mermaid to find the Hag. I didn't show that earlier. Sorry about that, but there you go. Anyway... This, uh, you follow up with a quest. You go here first. You follow up with a quest. You uncurse the doll in this in this place. You take out the you take out the mole. They give you a quest to go deal with the hag and make sure you pick up the save Von request as well for the little girl. Trust me, that's a good reward. I'm gonna show you in a second. Okay, you do that. You go to the blushing mermaid. You, you, you deal with the hag. You save Vonra. You come back here and they give you the Fey semblance amulet. And I'm about to show you. The other reward you get for saving that little girl uh, inside the hag. Duelist Prerogative. Legendary plus three weapon. This is the weapon that you can get from the save Von request that I was talking about. But there's actually something I didn't know. I think you also have to keep Myrina alive all the way from Act 1. So basically, moral of the story here, guys. As many NPC NPCs alive as much as possible okay even if you want one of their items just kill them off later you know what i'm saying because they can activate uh more quest and quest items in the future all right so anyway this is a really good weapon while your offhand is empty you score a critical hit while rolling a 19 or over you gain an, an additional reaction per turn so this is obviously a duelist type of build there is a duelist fighting style where you get plus two to your uh, either attack rolls or damage rolls, I forget, but this is obviously the best in slot for that type, that type of that type of build. On a hit with a melee weapon, use a reaction to deal additional necrotic damage equal to your proficiency bonus. And your proficiency bonus at max level is plus four. It goes from plus two, three to four. I think it does every four levels. I could be wrong, uh, or every th I think it's every three levels actually. Anyway, having again having extra damage on a, on, a, on a weapon is really good and because you get an additional reaction you could do this twice because you're probably playing a, a build that can attack more than once per turn so that's an extra four damage at max level that you are doing plus well actually that's plus that's an extra eight because you're doing it twice that's an extra eight damage on that turn Alum, you're not including your other additional damage items that you probably have in your build, like hell dust gloves, like a caustic ring, or a conduit ring, or you know some extra damage on your helm, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So this is a really good uh, one-handed rapier, specifically made for duelist builds. Okay, um, and of course it comes with some pretty cool stuff as well. Challenge to duel, bonus action, challenge any enemy to attack only you, inflicting bleeding on the target. So you can praise, you can basically taunt one enemy and inflict bleeding on them, and it only costs a bonus action. And because you're playing a duelist build, you're probably not doing much in your bonus action anyway. Okay, so there's that, uh, and it also comes with duelist enthusiasm. While you are not dual wielding, you can make an additional melee attack with the dueler. Uh, yeah, just. You basically can use your bonus action again to either challenge the duel or now you can make another attack. So this is a really, really, really good weapon for those duelist type builds. I will definitely make a build guide for uh, built around this weapon. I just haven't, you know, theory crafted it yet. But yes, you can get this from the save Von request in Act 3 that I just explained. But make sure you have also saved Mayrina from the Hag Cave because I think that has something to do with it. Uh, you can probably tell I have different characters here. That's because I wasn't actually able to get this from the save on request. And that's because I I, I, I neglected to save my arena because I didn't think it was that important. But apparently it is. Make sure you do, okay? The helmet of grit. When the wearer has 50% hit points or less, and they have an additional bonus action. And the reason why I'm showing this item 
Uh, obviously, having 50% less HP is a no-no. Okay. Um, but I feel like any items that give you uh, additional action or bonus actions manipulated in the right way can be really, really strong. Um, and for me, I'm going to try using this on my monk because for monks, they thrive off additional bonus actions. You know what I mean? So with this helmet and with wholeness of body, you can get four bonus actions. That's four Florio blows. And my Florio blows does a lot of damage, by the way. Okay. So yeah, you can get this. We are in the vampire place, Cesar Palace. There's going to be a little body here that's going to be cursed. I believe remove curse is the only thing that works. Um, I've tried using greater restoration before. It didn't work. So I think remove curse is the only thing. But you can easily have that on a cleric, or you could buy a scroll, so that shouldn't be a worry. Anyway, you remove the curse. You don't even have to remove the curse, it just does a lot, a lot of damage, um, because it's inside this chest right here, the Helmet of Grit. Alright, we are in the Vampire Palace. The Rhapsody, one of my favorite one-handers in this game. I mostly like to use this as a stat stick if I'm playing a Ranger build, because... It gives a plus one to attack rolls and plus one to damage and plus one to spell save DC for everything, every foe you slay up to a maximum of three. And this is recovered or this is reset after a long rest. So you could pretty much have this on pretty easily. You just got to kill three things. That includes three rats at one HP. <laughs> okay. Um, and I like this for ranger builds because obviously any bonus to our attack rolls is great to offset the sharpshooter feat. And bonus to damage is just really, really good too. And the spell save DC, if you're playing a ranger that likes using stuff like spike growth, is not bad either. This is, for me, this is pretty perfect for a uh, ranger type build, you know. Um, but you can definitely use this for... Uh, other one-hander builds as well and I mean to be honest plus three spell save DC is kind of a lot so you could even use this as your off-hander if you if you want to get your spell save DC as high as possible this item gives the most spell save DC out of all the items you know what I mean so it low-key might even be a spellcaster offhand I might even try that out myself but anyway you can get this item if you don't know, now you know. Kazador's dungeon. You get, you can get him off defeating Kazagor. Ka Kazagor? Kazador? Okay, and I'm pretty sure you can also use his level 12 body as an undead, like, necromancer thing. Otherwise, why would they have his body here? Because you gotta right click and loot, then you could find the uh, Rhapsody in it. Um, let me know. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have actually used um, his body. I definitely am, am, am making some type of necromancer build. Uh, so I'll be looting that as well. Um, but yeah, the Rhapsody, super good stat stick for uh, for a lot of builds. And I feel like I haven't seen the Rhapsody in many build guides either. Um, which I don't know why. This item is really, really good. And I'll definitely be, make, be making a few myself. Helldust Gloves. Very good gloves. You gain a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell save DC. And your weapon attacks deal an additional 1 to 6 fire. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional 1 to 6 necrotic. This is not stack, by the way. Okay. Uh, and you can possibly inflict bleeding. And it comes with a cantrip called Rays of Fire, which is only on these gloves, I believe. And what Rays of Fire does is a lot of damage. Nice. Okay. And it's, it refreshes off of a short rest. Pretty good. Um, most likely though, you're not going to be using Rays of Fire because you're, 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 if you're using these gloves, you're probably a spellcaster, uh, or maybe an Eldritch Blaster or a weapon attack user. So you're probably not going to use Rays of Fire, but just in case it's there, you know what I'm saying? Um, I like these gloves a lot. I normally put them again on either a spellcaster just to increase my spell save DC or, um, you know, any 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 type of build that does any weapon or unarmed attacks. These these gloves are very versatile. They're good for a lot of builds, and uh, I equip these every time I play this game, every playthrough. Okay, and you can find these off of Harlep, Harlep, Harlep. We are in Raphael's House of Hope, and you can get here by talking to Hellsick. She'll give you the items, 
Uh, remember what I said on how to activate her dialogue earlier? Do that. She'll give you the items. You got to open the hell hole and you get transported here. Uh, and I recommend going around where in the boudoir, I think that's what it's called. Instead of going through the front door, I recommend going around. Okay, it's, very, it's pretty easy to, to, to you're, you're into this door, it goes around, and you can just hop on these rocks, and you can like gank him, you get like one free attack, because he has like this really annoying thing where if you attack him, his reaction is he puts himself into the ethereal plane, and you can't attack him till his next turn, okay, it's really annoying. Um, but going this way, it's a nice little sneaky way, and also, if you do want to save hope, if you have done this quest before, there's this, there's a better entrance here than the one over there because the, here you can like you can like flank the beholders. Okay, but anyway, this is where you find the Heldus gloves off of Harlep. Very good, very good gloves. I'm gonna go and hover over the item one more time before I move on to the next one. Staff of Spell Power gain a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, uh, and it comes with arcane battery. Um, just like Marco Heshkir. Where's the Marco Heshkir at? Let me go ahead and just transfer it to my mage so I can show you guys both items. Boop. Alright, so Staff of Spell Power is pretty much the lesser version of the Marco Heshkir. And just in case you guys didn't know, if you take the dual wielder feat, alright, you can dual wield both of these items and have all their bonuses. Okay, you can have double arcane batter, which means you could use two level six spell slot spells without using a level six spell slot it kind of goes crazy it kind of goes crazy all right um for me i like using the shield just because i like that extra ac uh and with uh, with the spell shield uh with, with the level one spell shield that most wizards get um you get plus five ac so you have 24 ac so pretty much my my spell caster who does a lot of fucking damage has 24 AC. That's why I like using a shield. Um, but if you feel like you need that extra spell slot or that extra power, Staff of Spell Power, super duper good. You can find this at the House of Hope. We are still in the House of Hope. Okay, we are across the street from the boudoir where we got the Hell, Hell Dust Gloves. It is over here. Um, this wall is gonna be closed though. You gotta make a perception check first to view the, the key that can open this wall. Then you have to pass two intelligence checks, I believe. Um, so make sure you got a bard, make sure you got, you know, one of your wizards or something like that. The, the, the second pass is like a 20 DC. Uh, so use your buffs, use whatever you need to do to pass that. Over here will be Maul's contract. I still don't know, I, I still haven't figured out what, what, what to do with that yet. Um, there'll be like a little helmet in here that's not even that good. But here, on this little pedestal, this little thing, altar, there will be the Staff of Spell Power. Super duper good. The Amulet of Greater Health. Septoware's constitution score to 23. The enchantment has no effect if their constitution score is higher without it, and it most likely will not be, so you're fine on that. And you have advantage on constitution saving throw checks, which is, which is the same thing as concentration saving throw checks, uh, like concentrating on bless or concentrating on haste. This will give you advantage on that. So this amulet is really, really good. Uh, and I'd recommend this amulet on one of your spellcasters, actually, because uh, this means you can um, you can respec out of the Warcaster feat, you know, which already gives you advantage on concentration saving checks. You can respec out of that and get something even, uh, get an additional feat that'll, that'll help out your character. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for me, I love putting this on my, my support character because so now I know that my support character will never die. Cause it has so much constitution like look at her she has 140 hp pretty much over here and um they'll also be able to concentrate on high level spells no 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 problem because their constitution score is so high so this is a really good amulet for spell casters um but then again if you just want to use this on one of your melee characters to get their constitution super high so they never die as well then that's cool but i think it's super useful on spell casters and you can get this we are still in the House of Hope. The House of Hope is arguably the best place with items. There's a lot of good items here, and I'm not done. There's just, there's still a couple more items that I want to show y'all. But here we are. We're in the archive. Okay, here's the contract, or the Orphic Hammer if you went that route. Okay, and you go left. Here is the Amulet of Greater Health. Um, I don't know if there's a way to steal these things without you know uh, letting the guards know, but I just take them and fight everyone in the in the House of Hope anyway. So yeah, you can find this here, Amulet of Greater Health. Super duper good. The Gauntlet of Hill Giant Strength. Set the wearer's strength to 23. The 
the enchantment has no effect if their strength score is higher without it really good gauntlets again we, the house of hope has got some crazy items okay and you could find this um we're in the same room here was the amulet of greater health here is the contract slash orphic hammer and here would be the gauntlets and uh i mean i'll just let you know what i'm using it for so i'm currently um testing out a build we're already max level um on Carlac just because she 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 was an extra person that i could use and you could see my strength and dex are high and the reason for that is i'm using this bow this titan string bow this weapon deals additional damage equal to your strength modifier so until these gauntlets i was using elixirs of hill giant strength and elixirs of cloud giant strength okay until these gauntlets i was using those but now that we have these gauntlets i don't have to use those elixirs and i could use i can now use elixir of bloodlust so now i'm a level 11 fighter so i have three attacks per turn because of an improved extra attack so I can, I can attack three times per action right now i have uh regular action action surge action elixir bloodlust action and haste action so karlak is pretty much attacking 12 times per turn uh plus the, the level one war cleric so she's attacking at least uh 13 times per turn <laughs> Kind of goes crazy. You can you can do some crazy shit in this game. But yeah, that's what I'm testing out right now. And of course, I told y'all where you can find this. The House of Hope got some crazy ass items. Gauntlet Hill Giant Strength, super good. The Devotee's Mace, plus three weapon, adds one d8 radiant damage to your melee attacks, and it comes with Healing Incense Aura. For a bonus action, you can emanate a soothing aura, and you and nearby allies regain one to four hit points at the start of your turn every ten turns. Not bad. All right. Um, this isn't. To, to be honest, to me, this weapon isn't really that good. But the reason I'm showing it is because it is a legendary weapon, and I feel like I should be showing legendary weapons in this game. And for those that don't know, um, this is one of those um, one of those items that you can easily miss, and all you need to have is a a uh, cleric high enough level to cast divine intervention right I, I just used it um but then you cast arm thy servant so this is divine intervention arm thy servant uh, high level clerics can cast this and get this weapon if you want might as well right and you could you, you could just do this by uh uh you don't even have to use shadow heart if you don't want to you could do this to just, just in case you want to use the other divine interventions you I, I believe you can use a uh like a hireling or something like that you know like a, a hire a recruit a hireling real quick make them a high level cleric make this weapon and then take the weapon off their character put it into your inventory and then you know uh dismiss the hireling i'm pretty sure you could do that um so in in a sense you could kind of activate all these in divine interventions if you really wanted to but yeah this is a this is an okay weapon uh, there, there are a lot of better choices like the staff of arcane blessing or the the blood of lathander but if you want to use this weapon to, to, to follow a, a thematic builder type ship, then you could uh, divine intervention. Devotee's Mace. The Gloves of Soul Catching. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional 1 to 10 force. Once per turn on an unarmed hit, you regain 10 hit points. Alternatively, you may forgo healing to gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the end of your turn. And on top of all that, you get a plus 2 to your constitution. This is clearly and obviously the best in slot for any monk build. Because if, if you're playing a monk build, you're probably punching. And you're probably um, unarmed hitting with flurry of blows, right? Um, and you can get this if you didn't know. Um, defeating Raphael, I just beat his ass in like two, three turns. Easy. OP. Okay. And um, there is a condition though. You have to keep hope alive. You got to keep hope alive. Where is she at? she's outside but you gotta you gotta, you gotta make sure she stays alive so you can either do the feign death sanctuary combo um or you can you know you can have her stand outside or actually that, that, that doesn't work you can turn her invisible and just not her not have her do anything in the fight you know whatever just keep hope alive by the way someone someone said in the someone be saying in the comments that i don't play on tactician i only play in tactician even when i'm not recording bitch anyway <laughs> um but yeah Make sure you keep hope alive so you can get the gloves of soul catching. Um, and these gloves are insane for monks. Literally best in slot. The Hell Dusk Armor. I think I'm not too crazy in saying that this is definitely the best armor in the game. All right. Second best, I would say armor of persistence. 
armor of agility those are also good options but hell dusk armor this should go crazy it has base 21 ac okay and you are considered proficient with this armor while wearing it that means you don't have to be proficient in any armor you can have zero armor proficiencies and still wear this crazy when you succeed a saving throw the caster receives burning so if you're a character that has, has good saving throws against common spells like wisdom saving spells and deck saving spells you're gonna burn them okay so that it, it even does a little bit of damage okay and of course it has even more lines you have resistance to fire damage and cannot be burned and you take three less damage from all sources like this is so this armor will make any squishy character fine you know you could have a, a zero defense items but this armor only and be kind of tanky to be honest okay and i don't dude and it comes with fly like seriously it's such a good armor fly with a bonus action by the way even crazier it's just such a good armor best armor of the game you know when when larian studios made this armor they were like okay what can we make the best armor in the game look like and it's it's definitely this all right and if you didn't know now you know you can find this obviously off of defeating Raphael. we're just gonna go ahead and loot that oh i'm encumbered beat Raphael, however which way you want um and he drops this sweet ass armor piece the amulet of the drunkard while wearing this amulet regain two to eight hit points per turn while drunk additionally increase the duration of your inebriation by five rounds and just in case you don't know while you're drunk you have disadvantage on dexterity and charisma saving checks which is not not really a problem uh, whatsoever uh having disadvantage on wisdom and, and intelligence saving checks i think are more hurtful because of the mind flares and there are a lot of wisdom spells like hold person and some shit um but the reason why i'm showing y'all this is because i have i, I want to make i want to make a drunken master build okay using this amulet and this weapon punch drunk bastard i feel like this amulet and this weapon were made for each other you know what i'm saying and of course it's really easy to get drunk in this game you just gotta drink one of these um like it's some type of alcohol see how it costs a bonus action so um i think i found a build a drunken master build so i'm showing this to y'all now just in case you haven't seen my drunken master video if it hasn't come out yet you know what i'm saying but for me the most important sentence in this amulet is additionally increase the duration of your inebriation by five rounds because i think normally when you get drunk it lasts for two turns with this amulet it will last for seven which is basically a whole combat combats never last more than 10 rounds basically more than five rounds if you have a, a crazy ass team uh, like i be having you know what i'm saying so i'm showing you all this um but you can only find this so we are here at the Shares's Caress, you know, uh, the popular tavern over here at, Bald at, at Baldur's Gate. OK, and it is uh, at this vendor, but you have to do a dialogue with this vendor. You have to try out what they have. You have to try out their certain little beer or alcohol or whatever they have. And then it, um, once you have that, it'll open up the, the two new items in their shop, which is the Hoots Hooch and the amulet of the drunkard again watch out for that video i'm making it a drunken master the hellfire engine crossbow now before i show you guys the item i'm gonna show you how to make it because the game isn't necessarily super clear on how to get this item it's a very missable item in fact out of all my playthroughs this is the first time that i'm finding this item or making it crafting okay but first i'm gonna show you where to get the parts then i'm gonna show you where to make it all right, so first things first, the first part is the steel arm. It's gonna be an arm, it's gonna be laid all across this table. I'm gonna grab it, okay? Oh, obviously, we're in, this, we're in the steel watch foundry, by the way. Show where it's at, bottom left of the map, okay? We're in the steel watch foundry. You can find the arm on the left side of this building, right here. Okay, go over here. Oh, sorry, don't go up this ladder. On this table will be the target module. You wanna grab that on this table, the target module. Then you wanna go in here. This door will be closed. You wanna go in here. On this table will be the blueprints to the, for, for the crossbow, okay? Now, now you go over here and in your inventory, you should have the watcher crossbow blueprint, the steel arm, and the targeting module. What you're gonna do on this crafting table, you're gonna put all these in. Okay, let me go and do that right now. Boop. And there it is. The Hellfire Engine Crossbow plus two heavy crossbow comes with a level four lightning arrow pretty decent pretty decent okay and it also comes with 
repositioned malefactor pulls the creature closer to you and has a very long range. So no, that's not a it's not a super good crossbow. Uh, in fact, I, I would say some crossbow is even better than this if we're just going for straight damage. But I put this in the video because I know mo most people have probably not even heard of this crossbow. So you can get that by doing what I just said. You need three items. You need this crafting table. Um, and you can get this Hellfire Engine crossbow if you want it. The Gontr Mail, or is it Gontra Mail? Gontra Mail sounds better. Anyway, on a hit, possibly inflict Guiding Bolt upon the target. This is the only legendary bow in the game, by the way. On a hit, possibly inflict Guiding Bolt is really good. That means the next attack on it will be advantage. Pretty good. This object shines with a glowing light in a radius of six meters. So it comes with an innate light. Not bad, pretty good, especially if your character doesn't have dark vision. Um, it comes with also Bolt of Celestial Light, which can frighten your target with intimidating arrows. And after attacking, ranged weapon attacks made by Gontramot. What the fuck? <laughs> that's that's definitely a type. Was that the original name of the of the of the item? Gontramot. I took French. Anyway, um, so yeah, obviously, if you're fighting a big bad boss, you want to hit him with this attack first. So all your attacks after this will deal additional radiant damage. Sure. Um, but like I said, the most important thing about this bow is the haste now what is the difference between celestial haste and regular haste well first let me tell you what regular haste does regular haste uh gives you an extra action gives you a gives you uh, like plus two to your ac gives you a lot of movement speed super good spell the only bad thing about haste but it's it's a really bad thing is if your concentration gets broken or when haste ends you get lethargic which is basically you're stunned you bet you're stunned for a whole turn. Um, so that extra action that you get during haste, uh, if your haste ends early, it's kind of a waste. I didn't mean to rhyme there. Um, and I tell you that because celestial haste, that lethargic condition, that being stunned once haste is over, doesn't exist. So it's pretty much all the benefits of haste without any drawbacks. That's why this weapon is super good in my opinion. I like to put it on. You know any character that I want to have haste on, okay? Uh, and you definitely want to put this on any uh, the character that doesn't have Warcaster or doesn't isn't wearing the amu uh, amulet of greater health. You know, someone that that isn't going to make concentration checks very often. You give them this, and they'll have the that's a free haste every long rest. Celestial haste, super good. And of course, you can find this at the end of the Steel Watch Foundry at the big bad boss, the big bad Steel Watcher Titan. Okay. Um, by the way, there's a, there's, a, there's a super easy way to fight these things. You can get room powder bombs. Um, I didn't use it because my team is OP, but you can get room powder bombs in the same place that you can get the bomb, the, the, the super big bomb in. Okay. Um, yeah, you can get a, you can get flash binder. Uh, I think they're called flash binders. They're in the same place where you get this room powder bomb. If you save Wolbrin and, and you know mess with the iron hands, uh, that vendor will sell four flash binders. And if you throw flash binders at any steel watcher creature or a robotic thing, they get stunned and become pretty much useless. So that makes the fight super easy. Um, and yeah, you come to the, the, the steel watch foundry, enter the last room, and you loot the Gontronel out of the steel watcher Titan. The Amulet of Ball. On a hit, inflict bleeding upon targets that have maximum hit points. So this automatically bleeds targets, okay, if they have max hit points. Um, and the reason why I'm showing this item is because it's not necessarily a super good item, but I know there are a couple builds out there that do bleed, that have bleed as, as, the, as the core of the concept, so... That's why I'm showing this item, and of course, you can get this, or you kind of need this. Um, one of the ways to, to fight Orin off of this motherfucker over here, Saravok on, uh, Onkev. Okay, you can get it either by becoming a ball, a chosen one, where you get dipped in the pool of blood over here. It's kind of awesome. Or you can just murder him, okay? Uh, the reason why I chose to become a spawn of balls is so I could access, access this vendor, which I want to show you in a little bit. But that is how you get the amulet of ball. The ball armor set. Now, these pieces are okay, but there's one that shines, that sticks out out of all three of them. Let me show you all of them, though. So the gloves, the ball is gloves, gives you a plus one bonus to your attack, which means attack rolls. Okay. 
Um, and what does Garot do? Garot, wrap a shadow rope around a humanoid creature's throat to start garroting it. And of course, if they fail their save, um, the affected entity is being strangled by a garot. It is silenced and takes 3 to 18 bludgeoning damage per turn. If the entity and the garot are moved more than 5 meters apart, this condition ends. So you, you most likely want to combo this with like a stun or a restrain, you know, to, to, to keep your target from moving. Then these gloves will kind of go crazy, all right? Then you have the helmet, assassin of the ball cowl. You can see in the dark up up to um, three meters and you get a plus two bonus to initiative rolls. And it also comes with a nice C invisibility divination spell, okay? But the best piece in this ball set is of course the armor. You automatically get aura of murder. Enemies within two meters become vulnerable to piercing damage unless they are resistant or immune to it. And of course you gain a plus two bonus to initiative rolls. Um, I definitely am gonna buy this armor so I could work on a crit build using, you know, double daggers, piercing damage. I think that is for sure what this item is made for. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy to find vulnerable stuff. Items that give vulnerability. The best one is probably the amulet. Okay, but because if we use this armor, we could change the amulet slot to something else. You know what I'm saying? So there you go, that's the ball set. And of course this this vendor, first of all, this vendor, Echo of Aba Abazigal has really good crit items you know whenever you land a crit you do extra damage and dealing extra damage in this game is also hard to find so it's decent crit items here but of course the best item is the ballist armor and you can find these items at the echo of Ab 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 abazigal and the only way to access this vendor is to become a uh, a ball spawn which means you have to play along with saravok ankev over here get dipped in blood do whatever um, which is fine because you can just kill him afterwards to get his stuff anyway. And uh, actually, right after, right after, right after this, right after I buy some items off of this Echo, I'm gonna teach Saravok a lesson so I can uh, get some of the, some of the items that he's wearing. And there is a particular piece that he has that is really, really good. Saravok's horn helmet. You gain dark vision up to a range of three meters or 15 meters if you already have it. Okay, so it gives you dark vision. And of course, the most important line, the number you need to roll a crit while attacking is reduced by one. This effect can stack. So there are a couple other helmets that do this. There's the Covert Cow, and there's the Dark, dark Justice CR helmet, but those helmets, you have to be lightly obscured or something like that. You gotta be sneaky for that crit stacking thing to work. For this helmet, you don't need any of that. It just works okay so this is this is the best helmet out of those three and of course it has more lines you cannot be frightened and cannot be afflicted with other emotion altering conditions great line okay and uh, you can get this sweet ass helmet off of killing Saravok. okay but like i said make sure you make sure you buy the stuff off of the vendors because when when you kill Saravok, that vendor is gone the vendor, is no, the vendor no longer exists. So make sure you buy the items or pickpocket, whatever you want to do, and then kill Sadabok to get his super good helmet. The Armor of Moon Basking. You gain 22 temporary hit points after casting Wild Shape. While those temporary hit points are active, reduce all incoming damage by one. You have plus two bonus to armor class. You also have advantage on saving throws against spells. This effect persists while using your Druidic Wild Shape ability. So to me, this just seems like the best uh, Wild Shape Druid. Um, I haven't seen any anything else in the game that's better than this specifically for Druids. You know what I'm saying? Um, for sure, I will. I have. I, I still have yet to make a pure druid in one of my playthroughs, so I'll be doing that next time, and I will definitely be using this armor. And you can get this armor. We are currently in the Undercity sewers. Here's the Undercity ruins waypoint, and it's the guy that that, that doesn't talk right here. He will sell this armor, uh, and he also has a has a has a has a barbarian helmet, which I I I, I didn't. I didn't put that as a timestamp because I didn't think it was that great. I think there are better helmets, but you know, this is here if you need it, you know what I'm saying? But in any case, this vendor has a really good druid type armor, armor of moon basking. Flame enameled armor. You gain plus two bonus to initiative rolls and you have resistance to fire damage and plus two bonus to saving throws. And it also comes with the fire shield warm and the fire shield, I believe is one of those thorns thing where if you, um, 
if you put on fire shield then you can like reflect the damage back at your opponent okay and you take half of all cold damage so um i'm showing this armor because one it's really not bad at all i mean really it could replace the adamantine um medium armor you could replace that with this you know what i'm saying if you have an extra medium armor person in your group right um but also i, I feel like this is easily missable so you can find this we're currently here's the waypoint okay here's the we're at, we're at worms rock fortress here's the waypoint to the place okay and uh, it's actually back here behind like the bankers it's back here in this room and there's probably some more goodies over here that i'm gonna show you guys but in this chest you could find this pretty decent medium armor lord enver gortash one of the three main bosses you gotta kill in act three to progress through the storyline all right so you've probably killed this guy already before but in just in case you haven't and you're wondering what items he has first is his heavy crossbow the fabricated arbalest a plus two weapon very rare comes with illuminating shot which you can do on a bonus action hold on a sec comes with illuminating shot which you can do on a bonus action and you can inflict one turn of radiating or radiating radiating orb is a really good debuff giving the opponent minus one to their attack rolls every turn remaining so you can have them have like minus five attack rolls pretty easily with stuff like this and it also comes with dazzling ray which is a beam of light that blinds all creatures in its path so it's like a line and until the spell ends you can recast its ability cast it again so it's kind of like a, you can have this concentration spell without having having to concentrate on it that's pretty crazy all right so this heavy bow, uh, probably pretty good for a ranger slash spellcaster build, you know, uh, that's interested in stuff like this. So there you go. His chest, you can't be frightened. Cloth of authority, you can't be frightened and it cannot be afflicted with other emotion altering activities. You also have advantage on intimidation checks and insight checks. Kind of a meh, meh clothing, but you know, that's what he's wearing. His boots are also kind of meh. You gain a plus one bonus to charisma checks and saving throws. So this is, um, this makes sense as to why he has these. It's because... He's, uh, he's probably the best talker out of the three, you know, uh, main bosses that you got to kill, right? So, but these are pretty men, but if you probably already, if you have a bard, you're already making charisma checks anyway, but just in case you need that little extra boost, you can find it on these boots. I think his best item is his gloves though, or second best item, uh, your unarmed, uh, netherstone studded gauntlet, your unarmed attacks deal additional one to four force damage, which is obviously not, not as good as the, as the gloves are catching, but... You get a plus one bonus to spell save DC, and it comes with command already. Command is a super useful spell. It is not concentration, and you could have a, uh, an enemy like drop their weapon or just basically re remove their turn from combat, uh, one turn from their combat. Okay, and of course, there's only one other gloves that have plus one spell save DC, and that's the Hell Dusk gloves, which you would rather have on your weapon attacker. So uh, these gloves are very good for a spellcaster, and I recommend using it uh, for that. And uh, yeah, that's Gortash's glow. Th that, th th those are Gortash's items. I am now going to fight Orin next, uh, and I'm gonna show her her items as soon as I can. The Spellmite gloves. When casting a spell that requires, uh, you can take a minus five penalty to the roll to deal an additional one to eight damage. This is basically the spellcaster version of Great Weapon Master or a Sharpshooter except this can be used for spells and uh, something like this is really really good for eldritch blast for scorching ray and if i'm not mistaken it also works with magic missile okay i've heard it works with magic missile too so this is super good okay um you could definitely put this on an eldritch blaster if your if your attack rolls are high enough to where you don't you know you know the minus five penalty doesn't really matter Putting this on an Eldritch Blaster or a Scorching Ray character is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Okay, and of course you can get this by finding all the pieces of Dribbles the Clown. Okay, so when you defeat Dribbles the Clown here, we're at the Circus. So let me show you where, where, where I'm in the map. So here's the Rivington TP. This is the first map in Act 3. Here's the Circus to the left of it. Super close. You're going to have an interaction here where you got to beat the fake Dribbles the Clown. Um, and the, the, there's a fake Dribbles because the real Dribbles got their body got cut up into pieces by some murderers okay so your job is to talk to this lady her name is lucretius all right you talk to her she gives you a quest to find all the pieces of dribbles there are seven pieces of dribbles all right and um well i'm not going to show you where the pieces are because that's 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 not the kind of video this is <laughs> all right i but I, I can tell you go to google and type in dribbles the clown Baldur's gate three and you can easily find the location of all of them all right 
Um, I'm just here to tell you that you can find these super sweet gloves by activating this quest. And these gloves are very, very good. Okay? Orin, my favorite out of the three chosen. All right, for, let's be honest here, obvious reasons. Okay. <laughs> um, but besides that, she drops uh, a couple pretty good items. One better than the other, but still pretty damn good. Good. Definitely a lot better than Gortash's drops. I'd say Orin drops the best item. I'd say Catherick drops second best in his shield and in his armor. Uh, and I'd say Gortash's items are the weakest. But in any case, let me show y'all what she got. So her armor, just a rant, just a regular set of leather, leather armor. Nothing too crazy. Uh, the weapon that you, you, you see her holding throughout the game is this one. The really cool looking weapon. And of course... It has the crit stacking, reducing by one, pretty good. Uh, it comes with true strike, meh. And of course, if it's in your main hand, creatures hit with this weapon receive vulnerability to piercing damage. All right, which again is good. But if you're wearing the ballist armor that I showed you guys earlier, then you wouldn't need something like this in your main hand. And the offhand effect is when a creature misses with you, you with a melee attack, you can retaliate and gain true strike which gives you advantage on your next attack roll which again if you're playing an assassin build you're already gonna have advantage anyway so this weapon's pretty it's pretty meh the best line in, in this weapon is the first one where the number you need to roll a crit is reduced by one because this effect can stack so you can wear a bunch of crit stacking items like this um but the item her best item by far in my opinion is the crimson mischief the other weapon she's holding okay uh, this weapon deals an additional 1 to 4 piercing damage against targets with 50% of their hit points or fewer. Alright, uh, which again, for an assassin build, is not too hard to do, because you'll be critting, and you'll be invis, and you'll be having advantage on every single attack, and all that kind of stuff, right? When you make an attack with advantage, the target takes an additional 7 piercing damage. Again, you'll... Uh, if you're a, a really good assassin, you, and you have a... Uh, a reliable mage in your party they can cast greater invisibility on you and you, all you got to do is pass your stealth checks which is super easy by the way if you're playing a rogue and you'll just be doing an extra seven plus 1d4 piercing damage pretty much all the time okay uh, and of course the offhand effect is when you make an attack with your offhand weapon you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the attack this this can be easily obtained through a fighting style um, so you don't really need this in your offhand. I would use this in my main hand, and I'm also working on assassin builds. Uh, and this in the main hand just makes a lot of sense. Combined with another weapon, you know, that does extra damage on crit. That's the goal, and of course, uh, the dice damage is what's doubled in, um, in when, when, when you crit against enemies. Not the, not the additional damage, but the dice damage is what's get, what's, what's get doubled, from what I understand. Uh, and you can have a lot of dice get doubled for that assassin build. That is, that is what I'm working on. But in any case, where you can find Orin at the Temple of Ball. Okay. And to get in here, you have to either be a Dark Urge. Um, they just let you in. You have to get the Amulet of Ball from Saravok that I showed earlier. By becoming a, an, an Unholy Ball Assassin. Or just by killing him. Either or. There's a few ways to get in here. Much like the most of the game, there's a few ways to, to do things. I love how there's more than one way to do mostly everything in this game. That's one of one of the reasons why this game is so freaking good and why it's game of the year. Not even close, by the way. Okay. But yeah, you can find Orin here. Um, if you're Dark Urge, you can do a 1v1, which is a very easy way to kill her. The The harder way, though, most of you will, will, um, will have to kill her while she has the ball buff. And the ball buff... Every round, she gets 10 unstoppable charges, which is really, really hard to deal with. You either have to have a magic missile, you have to have a scorching ray, or you have to have someone that could hit her a lot of times in one turn, and then you can start stacking damage onto her. So with that way, uh, I'd recommend actually killing off um, the ritualists. So there, there'll be a circle of ritualists. There's like six or seven of them. They'll, they'll, they have low HP, but they all have sanctuary on them. Um, but if you kill off all the ritualists in this circle right here, then her buff goes away and she will no longer have the unstoppable or rather she would not be getting it every turn. So I recommend just pushing them off with, um, the repulsor illithid power with, uh, freaking these, the, the arrows that, you know, where are these arrows? 
arrows of roaring thunder where you can you know push people off any 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 push type of spell ability or attack to get rid of all the ritualists would help the fight a lot against Orin because that those 10 unstoppable charges if you're not playing the right builds can be pretty impossible to beat all right and again once you beat her up loot her body and get this super sweet short sword and there we have it y'all the best items in act three of Baldur's Gate 3 now if you feel like I missed an item, maybe I did miss an item or two, you know, there are, I feel like I've played this. Okay, so this is my fifth, sixth playthrough, or something like that. I would not doubt if even with all those playthroughs, I may have missed one or two good stuff. I might have. And if I have, let me know. Let me know so I could pad it into the notebook. Yes, it will not be in this video, but at least it'll be in the comments. You know what I'm saying? If, and if you're like me, I always read the comments for every video I watch. The comments low-key be, be more entertaining than the video, low-key. Um, but yeah, man. Look, I, I, I tried my best. I got all the items that I felt were good enough. Build enabling, you know, best one slaughters, good to keep in your inventories, that type of shit, right? And hey, if you did find this video useful, if you did like the video, like the content, like the commentary, like comment subscribe man all that shit actually helps y'all know how the algorithm be Algor algorithm is ruthless if i'm gonna be honest they care about everything so you know like comment subscribing leaving the video on in the tab mute that shit i don't know anything that can help 